Out of all the elements that we know at the present day, we know 114 elements up till now has been discovered. Now, out of these 114 elements, most of them, that means they are classified as metals, most of them. Some of them are non-metals and some of them are semi-metals. As you can see, there is a zigzag line on this periodic table. Now, that zigzag line, the elements adjoining to that, you already studied that in 9th standard, those are considered to be the semi-metals. In this chapter, we shall be studying a little bit in detail about the metallic elements. What are the general uses of metals? That is, why do we need to study metals? Because we use metals and their compounds on a very large scale. For example, aluminum being very light, ductile and non-corrosive metal. That means it is light by weight. It is ductile. That means we can make wires from that. And it doesn't have any corrosive effect. And because of that reason, we can make use of aluminum for making thin, strong foil paper used for packaging food material and also for packaging the medicines. It is also used in making cold drink tins. Copper. Copper is a good conductor of electricity, really extremely good conductor of electricity in its pure form. Also, it is ductile. And because of that reason, we make use of copper for making electrical wires. Gold, silver and platinum. Very inert metals, very high luster and obviously very precious metals. And because of that reason they are used in making ornaments. Mercury, you know that it's a liquid metal, only liquid metal at room temperature. It is shining and obviously it does not wet glass. And because of that reason we make use of mercury in making thermometers. See, we have wide variety of uses of metals. Lead, it's used in preparation of pipes, especially for the flow of water, and also for protection against the radiation. Pure metals like gold, silver, copper, platinum, aluminum, they are used in larger proportions. Not only pure metals, but let me tell you that we make use of these metallic compounds also, in a large scale. That is why we need to understand the process of obtaining metals from their minerals. Stainless steel, steel, brass, as I told you, those are the alloys which are made from by making use of more than one metal. Now we consider that earth is a treasure of all the elements. Different elements which are obtained directly or indirectly from the earth. The various spheres of the earth from which we obtain these minerals, that is lithosphere. It is formed of sand, clay and stone. Aluminum, copper, iron, calcium, sodium, such metallic elements are found in the form of their oxides or in the form of their sulfides in this lithosphere. Hydrosphere, that is the water body, including both seas, rivers, lakes, ice of the polar region, all that is included in hydrosphere. Non-metals like chlorine and fluorine, they are obtained from this hydrosphere. Some metals like sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, though not in pure form, but they are obtained in the form of their compounds from hydrosphere. Atmosphere, that is the caseous component of the, uh, which covers the surface of the earth. Now, that contains non-metallic gases like nitrogen or oxygen, carbon dioxide, all these types of gases are present in atmosphere. The forms of the metals in nature that we obtain, it is either in the free state or in their combined form. If the metals are non-reactive or as the noble metals, they will be found in free state. And if it is reactive or even if the middle order reactive, then they would be found in the form of their combined, combined form, that means in the form of their compounds. As I told you, less reactive in the free state and they are called as, called as noble metals. Gold, silver and platinum, you know that they are considered with the noble and obviously they are all precious metals, isn't it? More reactive metals in the form of their combined form, that means in the form of their compounds. Potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, all those are the examples of some reactive metals which are found in their form there, or in the form of their compounds 
in nature. Some of the metallic ores, their names and their molecular formula, their sources, that is, where do we find these ores in India? We are supposed to remember that. So the name of the metal one by one. First of all, starting with the core, uh, copper. The name of the ore, for example, the first one, that is cuprite. The formula is Cu2O. Copper pyrite, that is CuFeS2. Copper glands, Cu2S. Whereas malachite, that is CuOH twice. These are the ores of copper. Where do we find these ores in India? In Bihar and Rajasthan. You need to remember these names for MCQ purpose also and probably for two marker questions also. The ores of iron. Some of the ores, that is hematite, CFE2O3. Magnetite, Fe3O4. Sidrite, that is FeCO3. And iron pyrite, that is FeS2. Where do we find it in India? Madhya Pradesh, Tamil Nadu. Orissa, Bihar, and Goa. Aluminium. The name of the ore is bauxite. Al2O3 twice H2O. That is, it is a hydrated molecule. And where do we find it in India? Gujarat, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, and Bihar. About calcium, another very reactive metal, that is limestone, is one of the ores of calcium. That is CaCO3. Dolomite. That is CaMgCO3 twice. Gypsum, that is CaSO4 twice H2O. Once again, a hydrated molecule. Where do we find this calcium? Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh. In India, we find calcium at this in these states. Silver, horn silver, that is AgCl. And silver glands, that is Ag2S. And in India, we find this in Bihar. So, you can see that Bihar is very rich in mineral resources, especially for the metallic uh, ores.